Good morning, everybody. This is Mike Brennan at the National Hurricane Center. It's about 11.30 a.m. Eastern time on Sunday, November 6th. And we're coming on uh, online this morning to uh, report to you that hurricane season is apparently not done with us yet here in uh, portions of the Bahamas, Florida, southeast United States coast. We have a system that has a high chance of becoming a tropical or subtropical cyclone likely in the next day or two. It's a system currently here up to the north of uh, Hispaniola and Puerto Rico, and it's expected to move generally northwestward and westward toward the northwestern Bahamas and the east coast of Florida over the next several days. What we're looking at now with the system is uh, sort of a, a large system. It's sort of a classical sort of subtropical uh, cyclone development. So we have a, a center here that may be trying to take shape to the north of Hispaniola and Puerto Rico, and you see this expansive comma-shaped cloud field as the system is interacting with an upper level area of low pressure. So that's why we may initially see subtropical development. The point I want to emphasize about that is you can see the scale of this system is very large and we're likely to see impacts from this system over a very large area regardless of exactly where the center moves during the next few days. If we zoom in a little bit, we may again start to be seeing a center developing here. We're going to have the NOAA hurricane hunters and Air Force hurricane hunters flying out into the system on Monday to give us a better idea of whether it's formed and just exactly how strong and it is and what its structure looks like. But uh, as this system moves to the west and northwest towards the Bahamas and Florida, we have high confidence in several widespread impacts. Because this system is going to be large, it's going to have a big wind field, and it's also going to be pushing up against this big, a big area of high pressure to the north of it over the mid-Atlantic states. We're going to see a, a long duration fetch of northeasterly winds that could be gale force or stronger, sort of pointed right into the coastline from North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, along most, much of the Florida east coast for several days. And that's going to produce some widespread impacts uh, from coastal flooding, beach erosion, rough surf, and dangerous rip currents. This is the wave height forecast valid on Wednesday morning. And these red areas are significant wave heights out over the coastal waters of more than 20 to maybe 25 feet. So that rough surf is going to be aiming in towards the southeast coast and the east coast of Florida. Again, bringing those dangerous uh, surf and rip current conditions, potential for significant coastal flooding and beach erosion, especially in these areas that were impacted by Hurricane Ian back in late September. The coastline is especially vulnerable in some of those spots. We also could see gale and tropical storm force winds over a very large area well away from the center of the system over the next several days. Then and we move on to the rip currents. There's already a high risk of dangerous uh, uh, surf conditions and rip currents all the way along the Florida East Coast from Miami up to Jacksonville and up into portions of southern Georgia. That risk will likely extend northward later this week as we move forward. Now, there is the potential for widespread heavy rainfall as well. This is the seven-day rainfall forecast, basically valid through next Sunday morning. And these, uh, you can see the potential here and anywhere from yellow to orange is the potential for several inches of rainfall during this next several days. I don't want you to pay too much attention to the details of where the heavy rainfall is depicted because that's obviously going to change uh, depending on how the storm moves and what its structure looks like. But again, there is the potential for heavy rainfall that could exacerbate some flooding problems in places like eastern Florida where the St. Johns River is still elevated in the aftermath of all the heavy rainfall from Ian. So again, we're very confident there's going to be widespread impacts from rainfall somewhere from the east coast of Florida up through portions of the eastern Carolinas. Now, we also could see higher end impacts. This system could go on and develop into a tropical cyclone with a stronger inner core and could approach or be at hurricane strength as it approaches the northwestern Bahamas and the east coast of Florida by Wednesday and Thursday. So and if that occurs, we could see the potential for higher end impacts, a dangerous storm surge, potential for uh, winds, a strong tropical storm force, damaging winds, 60, 65, even up to 65 miles per hour, even winds up to hurricane force, potentially, if this system does go on and become a hurricane. And again, heavy rainfall that could track with or near the core of that storm if it goes on and develops that, those tropical characteristics. There are still several scenarios that could play out with the track of the system. It could move inland across portions of the Florida Peninsula. It could turn northward near or along the coast of the east coast of Florida, or it could remain just offshore and move up more toward the uh, Georgia and the Carolina coast. As we get through the next several days, that will come into better focus. But again, as the system is still developing, the uncertainty and the exact details of how it's going to move and evolve are going to be relatively high. Once the system forms and we get some aircraft data into it, the models will have a better handle on the system. We'll be able to hone in on the areas that are going to be at risk for those higher end impacts. But especially right 
right now we want folks in the northwestern Bahamas and all along the Florida East Coast to make sure they have their hurricane plan in place. Know what your risk is. Are you at risk of storm surge? Do you live in a storm surge evacuation zone? Do you live in a flood prone area? Make sure you have your hurricane supplies in place. I know it's late in the hurricane season. You may have already dipped into those hurricane supplies. You might want to keep your gas tank full. Uh, make sure you have cash on hand, food and water for several days, uh, medicines, and make sure you have uh, you know, ways to get information, batteries, you could see power outages. If you could be, again, asked to leave your home in the case of significant storm surge risk. So to wrap things up, uh, I want to encourage you to check back frequently for more information through the next several days as the forecast is going to evolve as the system starts to take shape, especially over the next 24 to 48 hours. You can get more information at the National Hurricane Center website at hurricanes.gov, at your local National Weather Service office at weather.gov. Stay tuned to your local media and listen for any information from your local emergency officials. One final point I want to make is now that we've made the switch to standard time, the National Hurricane Center's products are coming out an hour earlier. So the tropical weather outlook is going to come out at 1 and 7 a.m. and p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And when we, if we get to the point where we're issuing our advisory packages on this system, they're going to come out at 4 a.m., 10 a.m., 4 p.m., and 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So I'm Mike Brennan at the National Hurricane Center. Thanks for tuning in this morning, and stay tuned for more information through the week.